you to right now flood this sanctuary, flood this place, flood the atmosphere. Rise up, Holy Spirit. We acknowledge that we need you. We need you, Holy Spirit. We can do nothing, Yahshua Jesus, without you. We will not attempt to do anything without you. We need you to come and to orchestrate this gathering. Hallelujah. We are your children. We've come in one accord, being established and rooted in love. Being rooted and established in love. Hallelujah. The love for you, the love for the brethren. Father, we ask you to invade to invade us tonight with truth. Cause me, Lori Ann, to speak. Only what we hear you speak, Father. Amen. To do only what we see you do. Let the weight of your glory fall here. Break every yoke and chain of the enemy tonight. Oh, glory. In Yahshua's name, we pray tonight. In Yahshua's name, Father. In Yahshua's name. The name that is above every name. So be equal with God. He made himself of no reputation. And because he humbled himself, even until death, God has given him the name that is above all names, that at that name, that at that name, that at that name, every Every, every knee, every knee, every knee shall bow, and every tongue shall confess that Yahshua Jesus is Lord to the glory of God. We thank you here tonight. We lift that name up that is above every name. We lift that name up high. Yahshua Jesus, Son of God, Lion of Judah, King of Kings, Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. The Messiah. There is none like you. There is none like you. Yahweh, there is no other God but you. And we live in the prophet tonight. Can we please, can, uh, can, can, can you please, can somebody please stop shuffling in the background because what it is is distracting. So try to be aware of that because these phones are very sensitive. Thank you, Father. We lift you up. We lift you up tonight. Higher, 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 higher. No, it's not high enough. We have to lift you higher because, Yahshua, you said, if I would be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. I will draw all men. Yes, Yahshua, we understand now. You have to be lifted up. You have to be lifted up. And the way we lift you up, the highest honor we can give you is true worship. Worship that's according to the word of God and not according to the dead traditions of men. So we do lift you up tonight. We do lift you. It's not about me. It's not about anybody on this telephone, Father. It's only about you. The only subject is Yahweh. The only subject is Yahshua. The only subject is the Holy Spirit. For we are determined to know nothing among you except him and him crucified. The power that raised him from the dead and the fellowship of his suffering. Yes, we lift you up, King of kings and Lord of lords. 
We lift you up tonight, Yahweh. We lift you up, Holy Spirit. We acknowledge you as God. Hallelujah. 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 Glory, glory. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Well, I want to start tonight by giving you what the Lord gave me yesterday in my journal. And then, and then we'll go from there. God bless everyone. It's so good to have my brothers and sisters on the telephone call. God, God bless you, Brother Michael. How are you? God bless you. Are you doing good? I can't wait to see you in a few weeks. Okay. Yeah, I'm dealing with my heart. Praise God. I just can't wait. Sister Eileen, I'm so happy you're on the phone tonight. And, and uh, yes, it's an honor to have you. And yes, and Sister Ruthie, it's an honor to have you. And 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 Sister Evelyn, we, we welcome you on the phone tonight. Thank and you. Um, uh, Sister Sarah, you're from uh, you're from South Carolina, huh? Sister Sarah. Oh, Sarah yeah. Yes, I'm from South Carolina. Beautiful. Would you get our email? Um, yes, yes. Praise God, praise God. And, of course, Sister Sherry, God bless you, woman of God. God Thank God you, bless God bless you. you. I, I hope we're going to see you in a few weeks. Praise God, hallelujah. Lord God. willing. In Illinois, yes, yes. Yo, you don't want to miss this one. I'm telling you that God is going to move as never before at this gathering. He will move at this gathering uh, like never before. Now, who's the 347? We've got one more, and then we're going to start. So who, who, who Brother Lewis. Start? Brother Lewis, God bless you. Yes, sir. God bless you, man. Yes, God. Is, is this the first time you're on? Yes, sir. Praise God. Well, it's, it's an honor to have you on. What state yes. are you from, Brother Lewis? Where are you from? Um, Chicago, Illinois. Oh, okay. You probably got one of our flyers for the gathering, yes. huh? Yes, yes, sir. Beautiful. Don't get off the phone tonight until you say goodbye to me because I want to send you some invitations, okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, I got a message from the Lord two days ago, and, I, and you are the first group that I want to share it with. This, this message I, I, I must share with the whole body. Uh, and it, was, it wasn't like the normal journal messages I get. Usually the Lord speaks to me and talks to me personally, but this one was very different, and this is what he said, and I don't know how this is going to touch everyone's heart, but here it comes. I'm going to read exactly the way he told me, instead of me giving it to you. He says, son, the bride must prepare herself now. It is in my word. Wake them up, son. Wake them up. They must work out their salvation with fear and trembling. This is not a game. My people must prepare themselves. The worldly cares have completely diluted the urgency of pre preparation for my coming. Now let me repeat this again, what he said. This is not my speech here. The worldly cares have completely diluted the urgency. The worldly cares have completely diluted the urgency of preparation for my coming. Wake them up. Now, everybody knows what the word dilute means, yes? Dilute means that, for instance, if we have a fresh orange juice poured in a glass and we were to take water and pour it in, it would become diluted. In other words, the original taste wouldn't be there anymore. It would be diluted with water, yes? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, the disadvantage to that is you may have more but you lose the flavor, the potency. And the Holy Spirit is talking to me right now. He's saying, Son, I want you to explain it like the scripture with the salt. He says, 
if your soul loses its seasoning, it will be it will be bit to nothing but to be thrown out and trampled under the foot of men. Everyone says Yahshua is coming, but nobody really believes he could become coming soon. Now, it really doesn't matter to any of us what day he comes. Because whether he comes or we have to leave here, we, 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 we are told that we must be ready. Is that correct? Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. The Holy Spirit here loves us, speaking to us face to face, nose to nose, mouth to mouth tonight. This is in his word. The, the, the Lord consistently warned us in his word. First of all, number one, he said this. He said, there'll be ten virgins who are all waiting for me. And all ten fell asleep. Yes. Amen. All ten Amen. fell asleep. Amen. After them had extra oil. Now, all ten had oil. Listen now. All ten had oil. Oil represents what? Oil represents what? Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. But only five had extra oil. <clears throat> Father loves us tonight. He's saying that the body is sleeping. He's saying that the cares of the world, the cares of the world, Oh, this world has cares. This world has cares and cares and cares. It comes from the east, north, west, and south. Believe me, I know. Every day there's a different care. Every day there's many cares that bombard each one of us. But this is one of the things that the Father is saying is diluting the urgency of preparation for the groom. In Revelations, it says that the bride has prepared herself. The bride has prepared herself. God expects us, the Father expects, Expects us, Yahshua expects us to have prepared ourselves. Our enemy, in addition to the demonic forces, are the cares of the world. They have diluted the urgency of preparation. In other words, the urgency is not there. We talk it, but we're not taking it seriously enough. Now, in Luke, in Luke, we start out, actually, you can read the whole chapter 12 when you, you know, when you're alone. Tomorrow, you'll enjoy this chapter, 11, 12, 13. It's full of meat. Full of me, and I promise you, you will not get bored. But we're going to read chapter 12. We'll start out at Luke 11, verse 8. I tell you, 
Whoever declares openly, whoever declares openly, speaking out freely and confessing that he is my worshiper and acknowledges me before men, the Son of Man also will declare and confess and acknowledge him before the angels of God. But he who disowns and denies and rejects and refuses to acknowledge me before men will I disown and deny and reject. And then we move on to verse 12. For the Holy Spirit will teach you in that very hour and moment what you want to say. And now he goes on and and goes to uh, chapter 12, verse 19. He says this. Uh, Excuse me, not that one. He says uh, in 22. Chapter 12, verse 22. Therefore I tell you, do not be anxious and troubled with the cares, with the cares about your life as to what you have to eat, about your body, what you will have to wear. But life is more than food to you as of today, and the body more than clothes. Observe and consider. He explains about the lilies of the field, which we all know already, but now we're going to continue here. Um... Okay, here it is. He says in in verse 36, chapter 12, be like men who are waiting for the master to return home from the marriage feast so that when he returns from the wedding and comes and knocks, they may open to him immediately. Blessed, happy, fortunate, and to be envied are those servants whom the master finds awake. Whom the master finds awake and alert and watching when he comes. Truly, I say to you, he will gird himself and have them recline at the table and will come and serve them. If he comes in the second watch, before midnight, or the third watch, after midnight, and to them so, less happy and fortunate and to be envied are those servants. In other words, he's saying, He's not going to come at an hour when we expect him. But of this be assured. Yahshua is speaking. Be assured of this. If the householder had known at what time the burglar, now he compares himself to a thief, was coming, he would have been awake and alert, and watching, and would have not permitted his house to be dug through and broken into. You also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour and a moment when you do not anticipate it. Let me repeat this. This goes right in line with the word that I just spoke. You also, he's speaking to Jacob tonight. He's speaking to Florian tonight. He's speaking to Michael tonight and to Eileen tonight and to Ruthie tonight and to Evelyn tonight and Brother Lewis tonight and Sarah tonight and Sister Sherry tonight and Sister Dorcas tonight. 
he's saying this, you also must be ready. The Son of Man is coming at an hour and a moment when you do not anticipate it. Now again, the message from the Lord that he gave me two days ago was tell my people to wake up that the cares of the world, the cares of this world have diluted urgency, have diluted the urgency of preparation for the bride. Our people have fallen into the trap of falling into one of the temptations which he spoke about in Luke, surfeiting, which is excess of food and drink, and the other one, the cares of this world. And again, let me say this. The cares of the world may not be evil things. There's so many cares. Who calls you? How many people call you? How many people have this going on? And how much time do we spend with these people calling us? And then the different decisions we make as far as our priorities of taking us out of the prayer closet. Every page in this word of God, the Lord tells his people, what? Watch and pray for me. Watch. Watch. Watch and pray. Watch and pray. This is the most important thing that you can do in your life now. We are in a late time. The body of Christ does not understand that we are in this last sleeping. It's business as usual. Oh, boy. I'm warning you tonight, and I have to warn myself first because I don't want any blood in my hand. None, 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 none. I'm warning everybody on this telephone to start taking a look at your schedule. Taking a look at how you're spending your time. Yes, I understand that many have to get up and have to go to work. That's not what I'm speaking about. And yes, I understand some of you may have children and they have to be cared for. That's not what I'm speaking about. There's 24 hours in a day after the Basics are taken care of, like getting up and showering and going to the bathroom and in some cases eating, okay, and going to work. It is that time that's left over that must be devoted to the place called the secret place, the place that we meet with God alone. Now is the time. Now is the time. Now is the time. We are in the end of the race, and now is the time where we have to step up the heat. We have to turn up the heat in our prayer closet. It always goes back to the same message. I go back, and then sooner or later he brings it right back. It's the secret place where your face is in his face. Your face must be in his face every day now. My face must be in his face every day. It must not be with people. Yes, I'm not saying never see people. But we cannot be chasing people. We cannot be chasing after words from people. You must hear God face to face daily. He will instruct you daily now. If his son is coming, what day, how you should prepare. If you're in a face-to-face communication with him and not just the tinkering but good time spent with him, he will guide us. He will not abandon us. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father. We're all worried about Satan this, Satan that, Satan this, Satan. He's been put under the feet. He's been stripped. 
He's been stripped. We're not under a curse anymore. The world is under a curse. The world is subject to Satan's uh, damage of disease and this and that and that. But Christians who are walking in holiness, who are making an attempt to be holy, who are obeying the word, who are repenting, uh, and are following the Father, we have more enemies about the care of the world, about surfeiting, excess of food and drink. The enemy, again, has been this defeated by, the, by, 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 by Yahshua himself. He's been stripped right in hell. He is the father of lies. The only thing he mainly can do is lie to us. Lie. Tell you you're no good. Tell you you'll never make it. Tell you you're not this. Tell you you're not that. Tell you to fear. How do I know? Because he's in my ear. But we have to submit to God and we have to resist his lies. We have to resist his lies. We have to resist his lies. He's a liar. He's the father of lies, just as God is the father of truth. It's the cares of the world that are diluting our urgency for preparation of the groom. Our minds are going in 20 different directions, and then we fit some time into our prayer closet. <laughs> Seek my face while I still can be found, says the Lord. Seek my face. Seek my face. Seek my face. Seek my face. The way you seek his face is by cutting and stripping away the care. But Jacob, what's going to happen to the care? Let God worry about it. Amen. 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 Jacob, I said that if you want to. Jacob, let me take care of my care. He said, Father, God, Jacob is saying, I must seek your face. I must seek your face. Is he telling me the truth, Father? Go talk to him tonight or tomorrow morning. Amen. I would venture to say that he's spoken to you, most of you already, about this. And perhaps maybe we've mm-hmm. been more lax about it. Why? Because the urgency Amen. of preparation has been diluted. The saltiness, the saltiness of the salt has perhaps been diluted. You don't want this to be, do you? I don't want that to be. When he comes, I want to be so salty that people, when they come near me, are very touchy. You know what salt does to infections, right? Right, it purifies it. Clean. Yeah, they clean it all right, but what is the first thing that salt would do to an infection? Well, it stains. It will burn. It will Amen. burn. And you, we want to be on fire. Amen. We want to be on fire, and as Sister Lorian says, with much desire. Amen. I like that. Amen. I want to be on fire with much desire. For what? Amen. Yahshua, the Father Amen. of the Holy Spirit. We have to make sure. Listen, the Father is in this meeting tonight. Yahshua is in this meeting. The Holy Spirit is in. He is hearing what we're saying. We're going to just quote him. We don't want to go far or anything from what he's saying. Keep your lanterns burning, sisters and brother. brothers. Brother Michael, get that lantern burning. Brother Stephen, Brother Lewis, get that burning. Get that lamp burning brighter. Sister Eileen, it may be burning, but get it burning brighter. Sister Ruth, get it burning brighter. Sister Sarah, Sherry, 
Get it burning brighter. Sister Dorcas, get it burning brighter. Sister Colleen, get it burning brighter. Evelina, get it burning brighter. Mm-hmm. Brighter. And, 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 and Jacob, brighter. And Lorianne, brighter. And how do we do this? It's the secret place where we Amen. come and meet with them when there are no other human beings around us. When Amen. you can't hear the world anymore, he says, set your thoughts on things that are above and keep them set there. Set your thoughts on things into the heavenlies and keep them set. As far as this world goes, you die. You die. Where, 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 where is Lorian? Where, where does she go? I don't know. She died. She, she's not around anymore. Where, where is, where is brother, where's Brother Lewis? I, I don't know. Have you seen him lately? No. Brother Lewis is in the secret place. Face to face. Nose to nose, mouth to mouth with I am. Jacob, you mean you can have a relationship like this with him? That's exactly what the Holy Spirit is saying now. It is now that I will pour myself out upon my feet, says the Lord. This is the hour where I'm going to bring my bride close to me and and have them aware of preparation for my return. I love my bride, says the Lord. Would I abandon her now? Those who refuse to come to me will not know when I come and will not be prepared. But those who have ears to hear what the Spirit is saying will hear the voice tonight, and they will come to me. And as they come to me now, I will take them into a different level with me, says the Lord. I will pour myself out. They will hear my voice even clearer. They'll feel my presence even more intensely. Why? Because I will wake them up myself as long as they're willing to come to me, says the Lord. For I say, come unto me. Come unto me, says the Lord. Increase your prayer time. Increase your prayer time. We must train. We must train ourselves like athletes. Paul spoke to us and says, I'm a runner. I'm a boxer. I just don't hit the air and box it. I train. I have a training program. Runners have training programs. Boxers have training programs. Always increasing the weights. Always increasing the number of weights, the pounds they lift. Always increasing the distance they run. Always, when they box, increasing the number of rounds that they practice. They're breathing heavily. They're breathing heavily from the workout. They're tired, but they press themselves even more. Why? Because they have a crown that they're training to win. We also have a crown that we're in training to win, except this crown will not perish. Are you ready to start training? Paul said, I beat my body into submission. The fear of that after I'm preaching, I will be called a counterfeit. (laughs) 
set yourself up with a new schedule. Morning and night. Morning and night. Morning and night. Jacob, do you want me to become a hermit? I don't know what you call it. I'm, I'm saying he doesn't call it a hermit. What the Father calls it is, when you seek me with all your heart and all your soul and all your strength, then you will find me. No, he doesn't call it being a hermit. He calls it a man and a woman who seeks the face of God Almighty. Get your lamps. Get your lanterns now. Start filling them with oil. Make sure that it's extra oil. So that when he comes, you'll be one of the virgins and I will be one of the virgins who have extra oil. We must get our lanterns filled now. We must start to fill them. Fill them. Fill them. Fill them them with extra oil. Not just enough oil that causes us to be content. You see, what prevents you from getting the best is something good. We start to feel the goose pimples on the neck. We start to feel the heat in the hands. We start to get some visitation. And that's where we camp out. And that's where we stay. No. No. No, that's not the place to stay. We've got to go higher. We've got to press in. We've got to go in. We've got to go past where we've been. You've got to increase your fasting time. For those who don't fast, start fasting. No food. You're a man and God of you're a man and a woman of God. We live on no food. We live on no food. We live on no food. Man doesn't live by bread alone. He lives by every word that he gets in the mouth. We want to walk in the spirit. We must cut that food out. Amen. We the, and we must train ourselves to do this. Train. Train. Amen. Every day now, train. Amen. You could preach this to a different group of people and they would hang up. But this group tonight is not just a group. It's a hand-picked group that God called them to get on this phone tonight. I'm saying to you tonight that this came from the Lord tonight. The Lord is, loves us and he's warning us to get those lambs trimmed and burning. Trimmed and burning. We thank you, Father, tonight. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank, thank you for your mercy. Oh, God, Lord. Give us, give us the grace. Give us the grace, Father, to have the heart to get into that secret place with you, to see your face as never before. If somebody talks about fasting, you cannot turn around and say, well, I used to fast about three years like that. No. Your answer has to be, oh, I'm fasting more than I ever have now. I'm praying more than I ever have now. I'm, 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 I'm reading the word more than I ever have. And this is something I've got to do. I'm reading my word more, more, more. Not enough. Not enough. Not enough. So I'm encouraging you tonight. I'm encouraging. The Holy Spirit is encouraging us tonight. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into communion tonight. Um, Yahshua said this in chapter 6 of John. I am the bread that came down from heaven. 
My flesh is bread. My blood is to drink. He who eats of my flesh. Can somebody stop turning the pages, please? Because I'm, I'm getting sidetracked here. You're good. Thank you. Um, he, yeah, you can read it later on. If you're busy going to read it now, you won't even get what I'm saying. So that's good. I'm glad you're encouraged to look at it. No, save that when you get off when I get off the phone. Um, my flesh is genuine food. My blood is genuine drink. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood shall never die. Shall have eternal life. And I shall raise him up on the last day. That's what he's saying to you tonight. But he who does not eat my flesh and drink my blood, he who does not believe that this truly is my flesh and blood, has no life in him. They're dead. Now, what are we saying here? The disciples walked away, but they walked away because he said, well, wait a minute. This sounds like... um, cannibalism, eating your flesh and drinking the blood. He says, unless you can eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no life. Most disciples walked away. Now, Yeshua meant what he said. It wasn't a representation. Now, you say, well, what do you mean? He says, well, because in Corinthians, Paul says, many are getting sick in the body of Christ and dying early because they're not discerning this as the body and the blood. They're not taking their repentance seriously enough. You see, you can't come close to the holiness of God if you haven't repented, just like in the Old Testament when the priest went into the Holy of Holies. Only one one priest a year could go in and he had bells on him, and if he wasn't cleansed, he would die. The bells would stop ringing, they drag them right out. Well, God's holiness has not come any less. We've got to take our repentance very seriously because you're about to be elevated now. You're going to be learning worship, and God has got to elevate you as a priest. And you have to take this very seriously tonight. We must repent morning and night, morning and night, morning and night. Our most righteous deeds are but filthy rags before him. We must come to the door like the cru- with the crucified thief. We must come to the door tonight with the crucified thief. Does everyone understand what I'm saying? You remember the crucified thief who was with Jesus? And Yeshua said, "Ah," he says, today I will see you in paradise. Well, it says that the righteous are barely saved. That, That means Jacob. That means everybody on this telephone are barely saved. I highly overestimated myself. I highly overestimated myself. I figured I was a couple of notches up the totem pole because God had me do the no flesh dance in the Holy of Holies, but that's not the way it works. We come and knock at the door with the crucified feet. That'll place us in the right position tonight. And we come to him tonight. And we say, Father, search my heart. Show me what it is about me that offends you.
Give me the grace to run from these sins. My unbelief, my pride, overestimating myself, underestimating others, critical spirit. Finding fault. Why would I try to take a speck of sawdust out of a brother or sister's eye when I have a plank in my own? I'm a hypocrite. First take the plank out of my own. Then I can help my brother and sister take the sawdust out of there. That's truth, yes, Father. Disobedience. Father tells me to do something, I don't do it. Tell me a second time, do it. I don't do it. Stubbornness. Sin of idolatry. True love of God is that we obey His commandments. Forgive me, Father, for my filthy sins. Forgive me, Father. Forgive me, Father, for anything that I've said that I have not repented of. Anything that's come out of this mouth that always can cause me problems. Imaginations, actions that I have not repented of, I ask you to forgive me for, Holy Father. I don't want to sin. I don't want to sin. I hate it. I don't want to sin. I do things I don't want to do. I don't do the things I do want to. Who will save me from this wretched self? Thank God for you, Yeshua. Thank God for your blood. Thank God for your blood that goes deeper than any sin I could have ever committed. Thank God, Yeshua. That's the reason I get on my face to you, Yeshua. My God, I've got so much to thank you for. It is only your blood. It is only your blood that washes my sins away. It is a gift of salvation from you. There's no good thing that dwells in Jacob. Nothing good that dwells in Jacob. The only good thing that dwells in Jacob is Yahshua himself. The Holy Spirit. Body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And the Father. We in them, they in us. So tonight, we repent. Now, there's one sin. We have a few new people on tonight. This is important. Please pay attention. There's one sin that has got the body of Christ really in bondage. Every meeting we go, it's 65 to 76 people. And that's unforgiveness, bitterness, and anger towards somebody in your life. Somebody hurt you. Jacob, you don't know how badly they did hurt me, and I know I don't know, but God does, and he wants to deliver you tonight. Tonight, 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 tonight. Now, if you are in bondage to unforgiveness, you cannot go to heaven. You have no relationship with God, no prayer life. But Jacob, I don't care who tells you what, it's the word of God. He says, if you you do not forgive those who sin against you, your heavenly Father will not forgive you. Does everyone know that scripture? Please, if there is somebody on this phone tonight who is bound up in that sin, you must just say it's me tonight and God is going to set you free tonight. Tonight's your night for freedom. If there's somebody on this telephone, please, now is not the time to be shy. It's not the time to be embarrassed. You must be set free tonight so that heaven can open up for you and and your prayers will open up, your worship will open up, and heaven will be sent upon you tonight. Now, is there somebody on this phone tonight who is bound up in unforgiveness? Something happened when you were young. Maybe it was someone who walked out on you. Maybe somebody abused you. It doesn't matter. You just can't get rid of it. You go into the prayer closet, you see them. Who, who is it? Who is it? Okay, that's Brother Lewis. 
Okay, and who else now? Is there one more person on this telephone who's bound up in unforgiveness and bitterness? You've got to speak now. Michael. Michael. Praise God. Those are two. Who else? Is there one more? Please. Now is not the time to think about it. It's not the time to hesitate and say another time because if you don't do it now, you're not going to do it. You will die in your sins. Please. Is there somebody else? Um, Evelyn. Evelyn. Okay. One more call before we take them through this deliverance. God's going to deliver them, not Jacob. Yahshua himself is going to deliver you right on the phone right now. He's getting off his throne, and here's what we're saying, and he's going to deliver all three of you. Now, before we start, is there one more? Okay. Now, Brother Michael and Brother Lewis and Sister Evelyn, you know that Father loves you. You know that, right? Yes. And he has forgiven you of all your sins. Yes? Except there's one sin that you've committed that you forgot all about that he's forgiven all of us of and that's that we were one of the ones who put the nails in Yahshua Jesus' hands and feet. We were the ones who whipped him over and over. You say, but Jacob, what do you mean? If we didn't sin, he wouldn't have had to been hoisted on that cross. He wouldn't have been torn apart with that whip. It was us that he died for. When those whips beat him, the only reason why he could undergo it was he was thinking of you, Brother Lewis. He was thinking of you, Michael. He was thinking of me, Jacob. He was thinking of you, Sister Evelyn. He was thinking of us and saying, my joy is set before me. I'll take these whippings because this torture, torture, because this will enable me to be with them for eternity. The worst part about it is when Yahshua is on the cross and it got so unbearable that he cried out, Why hast thou forsaken me, Father? The Father turned to deaf ear. He couldn't, he couldn't end his life at that second. He could have if he wanted to, but perhaps if he did, Jacob couldn't have been saved because perhaps Jacob had more sense than anybody. So he had to leave him alive maybe 5, 10, 15 more minutes to go through that suffering. Now, the Father is saying to you tonight, Brother Lewis, he's saying to you tonight, Brother Michael, he's saying to you tonight, Sister Evelina, because I was willing to forgive you for what you have done to my son, I'm asking you from this day on, once and for all, to give up the bitterness, anger, and resentment to those persons or persons who harmed you the way they did. Are you willing finally to see this in truth? Brother Michael, are you willing? Yes. Brother Michael, are you... Brother uh, Lewis, are you willing? Yes. Yes. Sister Evelina, are you willing? Yes. The Father is not saying that what you went through was not horrendous. But what he is saying is this. Because I have forgiven you of what you did against my son, I want you to release them so that I can live through you starting tonight and glorify myself through you. Is the kernel of wheat tonight willing to fall to the ground and find die so that they can bear new life? Yes? Yeah. Yes. Yes. So let's 
Let's pray together. Father God, Father God, we pray to you now. Everybody, in the face of the blood of your son, Yeshua Jesus. Son, Yeshua Jesus. Father, forgive me. Father, forgive me. For being resentful. For being resentful. Unforgiving. Unforgiving. And bitter. Yeah. Towards, Towards. And you don't have to tell me. You can, you can tell yourself and name the names now to yourself of those people. Tonight, Father. Tonight, Father. I choose to give up. I choose to give up. Resentment. Resentment. Bitterness. Yes. And, and and unforgiveness towards and name them again. Unforgiveness towards. I want you to have mercy on those people, Father. I want you to have mercy on those people, Father. And 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 bring them to the cross. Bring them to the cross. Because if you don't, they're going to go to hell. Because if you don't, they're going to go to hell. And Father, I ask you now. Father, I ask you now. To heal my broken heart. To heal my broken heart. My broken heart. To set me free once and for all from unforgiveness, bitterness, and anger. To set me free once and for all from unforgiveness, bitterness, and anger. Yahshua Jesus. Yahshua Jesus. You said you've come to set the captives free. Yes, you've come to set the captives free. I've been a captive. I've been a captive. captive. Set me free now. Set me free now. That I may be a true worshiper. That I may be a true worshiper. And be able to worship you in spirit. And be able to worship you in spirit. And in truth. And in truth. And in truth. Heal my heart tonight. Heal my heart tonight. Because you said you've come. You said you've come. To heal the brokenhearted. To heal the brokenhearted. Now, what we're going to Yeshua is going to touch everyone on this telephone tonight as this DeLorean here is going to stand in proxy to you. That means that I'm to, I want you to put your right hand out. I'm going to put the oil, the palm up. I'm going to put the oil on the on the right palm up, and he'll be in proxy to you. As I'm doing it, Terry's going to be on you. Now, this is this is scriptural. This is the Roman soldier. He has to serve it home. And at that minute, that servant was healed. That's what's supposed to happen right now, because the Son of God is so to move into a life. The Holy Spirit is in for life right now. Now, here I go. I'm putting the right, right oil on here now. I'm putting the oil also on her forehead. Forehead. The right hand. I'm putting it on the left hand now. The left palm were on the forehead. And now I'm going to pray. And and that cure is going to move. It's going to move. It's going to move. Yahshua. Yahshua, you know what's going on this telephone tonight. You're the one who set it up. You're the one who brought up Brother Lewis, Brother Michael, Sister Evelyn. You know they need a deliverance. You must set your bride free tonight that they may worship you. Take your nails start hands right now, Yahshua, and place them in their heart. 
Now, that's short. Feel the heart. Now, heart, feel. In the name of Yahshua. Open every dark chamber of that heart now, Yahshua. A miracle. I'm a miracle walker, Yahshua. Open up every dark chamber in that heart and fill it with your light now. Fill it with your light now. I speak complete healing to the heart. Break the bondage right now. That yoke. Break that yoke and bondage now. Set them free now with that sword. Take it out of your mouth and cut the chain now. I speak healing to the heart and to the mind and to these damaged emotions. Emotions be healed right now in the name of Yahshua Jesus. You shall know the truth and the truth of this day. I thank you tonight. I thank you tonight for the work that you're doing, Yahshua. I thank you for the work that you're doing on this telephone tonight among your people who you love. We thank you. We thank you. We praise you for this tonight, Father. We thank you for the work that you've done. Now, I want, I want to say this without even a, a, a hesitation. Michael, uh, uh, Brother Michael, Brother Lewis, uh, Sister Evelina, you are free. You've agreed with the Father. You are willing to give up resentment. And there's no magic. You are free. But also... God has put his hand in your heart, and he has healed those damaged emotions. Now, you may get that voice coming back to you. Listen carefully, telling you, oh, you're not free. You're going to be, no, no, you just, all you've got to do is, it says, resist the devil by this. You do this very simply saying, no, Father, I choose to give up resentment and bitterness and anger towards that person. Lord, have mercy on them. Bring them. Jesus, before it's too late, I thank you for my healing. No, you've got your deliverance tonight. You've got your healing. And the Father says that you have your healing tonight. The Father says it because he does not lie, hallelujah. You're not going to his word. So I give you praise tonight. I give you praise tonight, Father. Hallelujah. And now, and now, we can all take our communion in peace and in happiness tonight, because everybody will be able to dine at the table tonight. Hallelujah. What more joy can any of us have than to see all our brothers and sisters come back to the foot of the cross? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, heaven is open. Heaven is open. When you jump into your prayer closet, it's all of you. I am telling you, heaven is open. Your worship is open. You'll see it when you get on your knees and on your face tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Now, Thank you, we're going to take this. Um, we're going to take the. Um, Lorianne is going to. Uh, Sister Lorianne is going to. Uh, um, is going to do the. Um, the the, the uh, body tonight. I'll do the blood tonight. Heavenly Father, we come to you through the faith in the blood of of Yahshua. Yahshua. The night that you were betrayed, you took the bread. You looked up to heaven and you said the blessing. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech olam, borei peri hadomo. But blessed be to the creator of the universe who brings forth the bread to the peoples of the earth. And then you said, Yeshua, this is my body, my body which I shed, which I break for you. 
Break your bread. Eat, eat this often in remembrance of me. <coughs> Yeshua, I eat your flesh often. You are my daily bread. I do not toil for the food that perishes, but I toil for the food that shall give me eternal life. You are the living manna, the bread of life that came down from heaven. The punishment on this body was for our peace and well-being. Yeshua, release your peace and well-being into us right now. We give you, this body carries all our rejection. We do not carry rejection anymore, for you were despised and rejected by your very own people, Yeshua. This body carries all our guilt, our shame, our condemnation, and every accusation made against us by Satan and his demons, and every human being assigned by Satan and his demons to attack us. We no longer carry guilt or shame or condemnation or guilt or rejection anymore. This body carries all our sins, every single sin we have ever committed to this very moment, this very second. We do not carry not one single sin. For you, Yahshua, by your wounds and by your stripes, the nails pounded in your hands and feet, the thorns in your head, Blood flowed from your head to your feet. They plucked your beard hair out. Blood flowed from your cheeks. You were spat upon, tortured, kicked by your wounds. The Roman spear in your side. Water and blood gushed out. And 39 stripes in your back. You were shredded and ripped apart. The Roman execution paper said there was so much blood coming out of your body. You were unrecognizable as a human being. By your wounds and by your stripes, we receive right now your peace and well-being, mentally, physically, spiritually, and emotionally. We curse any illness in our body in the name of Yahshua Jesus, all illness and disease, must shrivel up and die in the name of Yeshua Jesus. If anyone's on that phone right now, let's continue on into him. Does anyone need a healing on that phone right now? Yes. What's wrong? Asthma. Who who, who is that on the phone right now? Natasha. God bless you, Sister Natasha. What do you need healing for? Can you say? Um, asthma. Uh, 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 We're having trouble hearing you, uh, Natasha. What do you need healing for? Asthma. Asthma. Okay. We curse. We curse asthma in the body. We curse all asthma in the body in the name of Yeshua Jesus. We curse asthma at its root. It must die and shrivel up. By the authority of Yeshua Jesus, asthma, you must shrivel up and die right now in the name of Yeshua Jesus. We curse all uh, high blood pressure, all heart disease, all high cholesterol, all diabetes. In the name of Yeshua Jesus, we curse all cancer. In the name of Yeshua Jesus, we curse it at its root that must die by the power and the authority of Yeshua Jesus. Lord, we, we realize this, this flesh is not a representation of your flesh. This is your body spiritually. Two shall become one. I and Yeshua Jesus shall become one as we eat of your flesh now in the love of the brotherhood. Mm. Thank you, thank you, thank, thank you, you Yeshua, for dying. Thank you for dying for me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you for your food. I I feast on your flesh. I feast on it morning and night, morning and night. I can't get enough of it, Yeshua Jesus. This is my food now. He says, "This is the blood 
of the new covenant that I shed for you for the remission of sins as often as you drink of it. Do it in memory of me to proclaim my death and resurrection. Blessed be to the creator of the heavens and the earth who brings forth the fruit of the vine. The blood washes our sins away. All our sins are washed tonight. Everyone on this telephone is white like snow according to the word of God. You don't carry guilt anymore. You're not permitted to carry guilt anymore. You're not permitted. Why? Because you're a worshiper. This body carries this blood. Life is in the blood. Life is in the blood. His loving kindness, his mercy, his compassion, faithfulness, righteousness, obedience to the Father, his love, compassion, his peace, his deliverance, his resurrection power, his empowerment, the power that raised him from the dead in the fellowship of his suffering. It's all in this blood. And when we drink it, we drink him. We drink him. This is not a representation. You either believe it yes. or you don't. Yes, I do. Amen. We drink your blood tonight. Amen. Thank you, Lord. In the love of the brethren. Mm, thank you, thank you. Your blood, Yeshua, beats in my heartbeat. I and Yeshua Jesus are one. I and Yahweh the Father are one. I and the Holy Spirit are one. You are the vine, we are your branches. You are the vine, we are your branches. And we... Pray to always, always, and forever abide into you, Yahshua. We look to you, we look to you. We shall not look at the storm or the waves, but we shall look only to you, Yahshua, and be saved. You are our source, our source, the very breath we breathe. You are the vine, we are your branches. Praise God tonight. Now, this God is truly intensifying here. We started this phone call by a word from the Lord that I had two days ago that the body has to wake up because the bride is not ready for his return. The cares of the world have diluted the urgency of the wife, of the, of the bride's preparation. The cares of the world has diluted the urgency for the bride's preparation. You must take your sword and you must make a predetermined decision to just cut those things loose from you. Again, Brother Jacob is not saying you're going to quit your job. No, no, I'm not saying that. There's responsibilities we must do. I'm not talking about that. It's carrying worry, carrying stress, carrying this and that, which we all have. It comes from all over in this world. But you, we have to make that decision that you must get rid of everything that's distracting from Jesus. The secret place is the place where you have made the place where you meet with God morning and night alone. It's the place, and we're not going to go through that tonight, but but what we're going to do is we're going to leave it at this tonight, and I want to encourage we're going to encourage you. to get ready and prepared to start intensifying your time with the Father. 
on the following calls, we're going to go into worship. What it is, we didn't have time to go through that tonight because God had other plans tonight. But to brief it up for everyone, if you go to Psalms 29, it says, our Bible say, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. But if you go to the original Hebrew, that word worship doesn't say worship. It's bow, bow to the Lord in the beauty of holiness. In other words, worship has been stolen from the church today. In the churches today, people call worship standing up and singing songs. No, that's not the definition of worship according to the word of God. Um, Again, praise is honoring God for what he's done. You can sing, you can stand, you can dance, you can run around the church and, 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 and just praise him. And that's honoring God for what he's done. Praise and worship are very different. Worship is honoring God for who he is. And the word of God definitely in the concordance gives the meaning in the Old and New Testament. Again, just to brief it up, that the word worship means to bow, to kneel, and to prostrate oneself. The word sing is not there. The word stand is not there. The word sit is not there. It's just not there. So this is where God is taking us. Um, Worship will be the tool that will help accelerate the bride's preparation for Yahshua's return. In other words, the bride needs a way to prepare herself and Worship is going to be the vehicle where even a new convert who just accepted Yahshua two days ago could enter into it and accelerate their progress. Because you see, it's the Holy Spirit that moves like the wind. He's not, he's not a, the Holy Spirit is not a college professor. He doesn't require four years of graduation. The Holy Spirit can invade a man and woman two days or a day after they get saved and they can be filled with the Spirit of God, much more than somebody who's been walking 30 years with him. So this is where we're at right now. God is is, is doing a phenomenal thing in deliverance this year. I'm just so totally awed tonight This is what's been going on in the gatherings. At every gathering, 70% of the body of 70% of the body of Yeshua is locked into bitterness because there is no glory in the churches. In order to get deliverances, you need glory in the churches. The reason there's no glory is there's no true worship. Only true worship can bring the glory down each and every time. And that's what brings deliverances. That's what it's not to say they can never have glory on a service, but I'm talking about on a steady basis. Any questions, speak to me. Ask me anything. It doesn't matter what it is. Everything is important. Anything you have on your mind, speak. Please. Felina, Colleen, Sister Dorcas, Sister Sherry, Brother Lewis. Sister Ruthie, new people. Have, who's 530, by the way? 530? What, what area code is that? What, where, what state is that from, 530? Okay, well, next week. You, what about the 708? Who's on 708? Pastor Carol. Oh, Sister Carol, God bless you. Welcome to the call. God bless you, too. Welcome to the call. We just had a phenomenal deliverance of bitterness on three people who came on tonight. Just just, just phenomenal, Sister Carol. Just God is already moving Amen. already. Just phenomenal. Okay, we have 813. Who's that? And the reason why is because we pray for you, and, and, I, and I want to know your names. I mean, you want me to pray for you, don't you? Uh, Prophet is Tillman, Florida 813. Prophetess Tillman? Yes. Prophetess? 
And that's, is that T and Taunt, T I L L N A N? M O N, yes. M O N. How do you spell it again? Just to, to have it. T I L L M O N. Oh, T I L L M O N, Tillman. Okay. Yes, yes. <laughs> okay, beautiful. And what area are you from in Florida? Florida, uh huh. What area? Uh, Lakeland. Oh, Lakeland. Okay, very, very good. We're in Stewart. Praise God. Hallelujah. Um, Praise God. If there's any possibilities for any of you who don't live in Illinois to make that Illinois gar- gathering, I'm really encouraging you to come, and, or the Virginia one. Um, we truly, truly believe that this is this is worship. This is God's heart. This is what God is doing. This is the messages that we bring on worship are not our own messages. They're not messages that we take out of the Bible and come and bring it. This is the, the, the messages that we bring are, are sent by him. I mean, the, the, about true worship. And worship is the foundation. I mean, Yeshua, the Father and the Holy Spirit are the foundation of our, our temples and our sanctuaries. We, we know that. But our response to the of making him God is true worship. This is the issue that's got to be dealt with with God and his people now. He's confronting his people, each and every one now, in the, whether they will bow their knee or the, whether they refuse to bow their knee. And it's not going to be a matter of, oh, he's going to force us. No, 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 no. He doesn't want that. That's not the way. He's just putting the question up, explaining to his people what worship is and what it's not, and that it's up to us to say, my Lord, my God, forgive me. I have not been in worship all my life. Forgive me, Father. You see? So I'm encouraging all of you if you're not in Virginia, not in Illinois, to make to make the trip. The other thing we're encouraging you to do is if anyone can gather 20 people together, whether it be in a house or whatever, um, we'll make the trip out there. We don't charge for importation, okay? But if you can gather 20 people together in your in your place, in your city, we'll, we'll make the trip. That's something that God put on our heart, and we're going to enter into that. Um, uh, the remnant will worship him. God is looking to get his remnant now. Those in Leviticus, it says, those who come close to me must honor me. Then I will be honored before the whole house of Israel. Those who refuse to honor him in true worship are going to be at a distance. That's just the way it is. I find that the people who refused this worship 12 years ago, I ran into them a couple of weeks ago, and they're still where they were 12 years ago. Just the same place. Questions, anybody? Again, anyone have a word for us tonight? Anybody have any a word for us tonight? Father, if you want to speak to us, put an unction. In them, Holy Spirit, put an unction in them. We wait on you, Holy Spirit. Brother Jacob? Yes. Brother Jacob, um, a sister sent me a dream tonight that someone had, and I think it confirms exactly what you were sharing tonight, that word that the Father gave you. Yes. Um, Would you like me to read it? It's real short. Yes. So it was, I take it, I think it was some brother, but he said, okay, so he fell asleep And he said what happened next is what he wanted to share. He said he had a dream that thousands of demons entered his bedroom and jumped on him while he was in bed, devouring his flesh. He said, I was totally paralyzed. 
I repeatedly shouted out, you must flee in the name of Jesus. These demons continued to attack me. There was total darkness. No Jesus. These demons continued to attack me. It was horrifying. I felt as though I was in the pit of hell, and this is where my soul was going if I don't change my ways. Then I was whisked away, and I was standing in front of a large cross. And from the center of the cross, a bright light was shining. I heard the Lord say to me, come to the cross. I did not hear nor respond to your cries because you are not abiding in me. Horrific evil is here and more is coming. And if you do not abide in me, you will be devoured. I will not hear nor respond to your cries if you do not abide in me. And you will not be able to fight off this evil in your own strength. Then I was whisked back to my bed where the same thing occurred. Once again, I was paralyzed, but I breathed on them saying, Jesus, and they all fled. I woke up with tears streaming down my face, crying out to the Lord. Oh, it was a lady. Her name is Sandy. Well, Sandy, it could be. Anyway, well, I, just... I, I tell you, that's enough to move me to, 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 to really understand what's happening tonight. I'm encouraging everybody on this telephone tonight. I'm encouraging every, and that's me first. Everyone here, it's for me first. And me. And to, 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 and to, trim, your, to trim, he says, trim your lantern. Trim your lanterns. Get those lanterns filled not only with oil, not only with oil, but with extra oil. Amen. Take a look. Take a look at your prayer line. Now you should be increasing them, not being satisfied where you are. No, not being satisfied where you are, but increasing the prayer time, increasing reading the word, increasing the fasting. Fasting means no food, unless, of course, you're on medication where you're limited, and I understand that, and God understands. You've got to be healed. You should have been praying for healing on that. And if there's anyone ever on this phone, you know, that needs healing in any kind of sickness, you, you know, you have not because you ask not. God's honest in, in this, in this, on this phone, and uh, he, he'll heal. He'll heal. He'll heal. And, and, and that's what, all I'm saying. So I want to encourage everybody. Trim your lanterns. Do not let the cares of the world dilute the urgency of being prepared for the coming of the Lord. Get rid of the cares of the world. Just cut them out of your life. Just cut them out. Refuse them. Just make a predetermined decision after tonight. In Hebrews it says, cut away everything that distracts Jesus. We are at the end of the race now. The end of the race will be more severe than the past. It's not going to be like we've had it. We'll we'll be in the midst of the glory, but we're also going to be in the midst of the warfare. Amen. So, so let's let's take what God has given us tonight and act on it. The question is, will we take this seriously, or will it go one ear in, one ear out? Do not let the enemy steal it from you. We plead the blood, the blood, the blood on everyone's ear right now. For everybody on this telephone right now, <coughs> Lori Ann, Michael, um, Ruthie, Brother Lewis, Sister Sherry, Sister Dorcas, Sister Colleen, Sister Evelina, Sister, uh, Sister Carol, Prophetess Tillman, Eileen, and the 530 area. Can I have that 530 area? Who's that? <laughs> The first name on 530. Well, I pray. Yeah, I'm Brian. Brian. God bless you, Brother Brian. Um, what state are you from? California. Beautiful. I pray for Brian. I plead the blood of Yahshua upon them right now, Father. 
Father, fill them. Fill them with the Holy Spirit. Fill them. Fill them. Bring the urgency back. Bring the urgency back. Bring the urgency back, Father, of your coming, Yahshua. Put a heavy hand upon each and every one of these believers. They're my sons. They're your sons and daughters. They're my brothers and sisters. It says, Father, to love. Yahshua, you said, I come a new command that I give you. Love one another. Father, if we're going to love one another, we've got to care for one another. Father, I want you to pour your spirit out upon them tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Let the earth be upon them tonight, Father. Let Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. This was a meeting with you, Father. Oh, glory, glory, with glory. you, oh God. I thank you. Let it go deep into me, Father. Let it go deep into me. Shake my inside, Father. Amen. Shake my yeah. inside. Yeah, thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father, thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for loving us enough to chase us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your chastening, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Sister Sherry, why don't you lead us into some worship here? Get off you. Oh, Father God, there is none like you. We bow down. Prince of peace, that is what our hearts long to do. We give you away. Oh, my heart, I rise in We worship you. Thank you. Oh, Father. There is no night of mirror, mirror, mirror,
for all your provision, Lord. Oh, Lord, we thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you that we can draw nigh unto thee. Lord, we love you. Lord, we adore you. Lord, you are, yes, you are King. Lord, we cry out, holy, holy. Lord, we cry out, holy, worthy. Lord, we cry out, draw us closer and closer, Lord, to Thee. Hallelujah, Lord, draw us closer to the precious Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, and 
you should know that there's a place here for everybody that we're your servants. We are here to serve you. That's just the way it is. Lori and, Lori Ann and I are here to serve you in any way we can. Okay, and, and so are the other people, not people, brothers and sisters who are on these lines. So tomorrow night we have Pastor Pam and Pastor Ruben. Thursday night we have Apostle Patricia Tyus. Okay, she's on Thursdays, Monday night. And then Sunday we have um, Mary Long. So there's, 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 there's a place for you to go any night of the week, actually, except for Friday and Saturday. And I want to encourage you, you know, if you need a word or whatever, just get on the phone and don't hesitate, you know, to ask questions. Um, so uh, God bless everyone. Uh, I'm going to encourage again everyone, if they can make these, whether it's the Illinois or the Virginia Gathering, in Dallas. or Dallas, Texas, we're going to be in Dallas in, in, uh, in, March. in, in the March, to, to make one of these gatherings. Uh, we're going to lay hands on you three times, and we're going to anoint you with oil. And it will be an impartation. That, that God is doing something now, and and I'm, I'm, you know, I know something's going on at big, big time. And uh, it's you know sometimes you just got to flow with the river. Um, so uh, God bless everyone. Let's see. Uh, why don't you, Sister Eileen? Why don't you close, no, Sister Eileen? Why don't you close this out tonight? Prayer. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, brother. Father, Lord Jesus, Holy Spirit, words can't even express our gratitude for you calling us out of darkness and into your marvelous light. Oh, glory. We desire to stay in the light and not just be in the shadows, but to be in the fire of your love. Hallelujah. In the fire of your Holy Spirit, I pray, Father, that as you were showing me this last week about wood, drying out the wood, that your will that the wood would be dry so it could catch on fire. You don't want smoky wood that can't burn. Refine us, Lord. Refine us in our heart. Refine us in our minds. Refine us in our wills, refine us in our bodies, and unite our spirit so that we can burn brightly with your fire, oh, and that you would be glorified, Father, in our lives, that we would not see the wood, they would not see us, but we would be caught up into the flame of your love, and into the flame of your spirit, into the flame of your love, and send out your fire, send out your fire, Lord. Onto this yes, earth. Use us, Lord, as sparks, as fire. Lord, let the fire burn in us first, Lord. Refine us, refine us, refine us, Lord. And bring us into that secret place in a deeper way, Lord, as ever before. And burn us alive, Lord. Burn us out. Burn us yes, for you and for your glory. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes. Amen, Lord. Oh. Glory to God. Glory oh. to you, Jesus. Yeah. Glory. Thank you, Lord. Glory. Glory. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Consume the sacrifice, Lord. Yes, Thank God. Hallelujah. Living sacrifice. Yes, yes God. Thank you. Be lifted up, be glorified, be glorified. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Glorified God. Hallelujah. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Glorified God. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Yeshua. We thank you, Holy Spirit. Well, God bless everyone. Brother Lewis, I want to get your address. Can you give out invitation? Uh, just a little before, hold on, one more thing. Just a little before, uh, no, no, I just, um, I, I just want to say God bless everyone and may Yahweh shine, Father shine his face upon you. Be blessed. Mm-hmm. Amen. 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 Love you all. Please, please, everyone, please keep praying for us for the, um, Please, uh, this is for the Illinois gathering, uh, February 6th. In Chicago. And, and the Fredericksburg, the 21st of February. This is a, 
please pray for us every day on that one from here till till it is, please. Yeah, Amen. Amen. I will. We need prayer. Yeah, we, okay? we, we need someone who's, who's going to just pray it through until that time. Amen. And, and Brother okay. Lewis, if I send you a, a well, God bless everyone. Brother Lewis, God bless you. Bye bye. Do you think you can get out a hundred invitations if I gave you?